Alright, what is going on YouTube? It is Quick Snoopy, and today I figured I would make a video talking about my Ember Spirit and how I've been playing Ember recently uh, in this patch. It's really a highly requested video, so I figured I would just do a replay commentary of the whole thing and give you guys my uh, thought process and my ideas. This game only happened a few days ago, so I still kind of remember uh, everything that happened. So without further ado, if you enjoy these types of videos, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. So if you notice on my starting items here, um, I want to point out that I have a fairy fire and a ward that was given to me and the standard uh, stout shield, quelling blade, and tangles for the region. Um, you can have your teammates give you a region if you need to, but otherwise, uh, <clears throat> otherwise I just buy my own tangles. So... And the TP scroll that's given to you, of course, too. So, uh, first thing you want to do is go for the rune. I think here, um, <clears throat> getting the rune and like trying to get bottle as soon as possible is really beneficial. So I look at the enemy's uh, items and I see that Lena has a, a ward. So it's important to like always check your enemy's uh, inventory and see if they have any region or what items they have or what items they're going to build because uh, that can kind of tell you the direction of where the game is going. So mid lane, I didn't get to block the creep wave. Sometimes I'll have my teammates do that for me. You want to focus on denies with Ember Spirit. Um, last hitting with Ember isn't hard, but getting... Early last hits can give you an advantage. Uh, your goal, I think, is to get like level 6 as soon as possible. And I'm probably telling my teammates right about now that I want them to gank when I'm level 6. It's kind of just a, a habit. You get 3 remnants at level 6, so you want to make sure you use all those. And that stacks with the damage. So if you notice my last hitting, my positioning as well. I'm kind of running around in circles here because I don't want to get attacked by Lich. So it's important to keep your distance and you have to know his attack range. I also know he's on high ground and I haven't placed the ward yet. So I have to be very careful with what I'm doing. Like right now I'm taking unnecessary hits just to take that last hit. But I have five tangos and a fairy fire, so it's okay. So I know Lich has um, one lace and that he also has tangos so I'm keeping an eye on that when I'm playing again notice my last hitting notice where I placed the ward he should have known that I placed a ward there I don't think he dewards it this game uh, if he would have then I would have just warded somewhere else but again look at like my positioning how I run back on high ground So right here, I'm going to pull the creep wave towards me, and I actually want to pull it behind the tower. Now, I last hit under tower, and I got that last hit, and I got that one as well, and the third one. So you just got to practice last hitting under tower. Um, I'm pretty good with Ember Spirit, so last hitting under tower isn't extremely difficult for me. So here, I can't really do a whole lot because I'm melee, and he's range, right? So I push the wave, and if you look at the items I'm building, I'm building a Ring of Aquila, which is going to allow me to push the lane even more. I don't really have any heroes on my team that would uh, build Ring of Aquila, like usually. So it's just all about communication, but it's going to provide me with an aura that's going to let me push the tower really early on. Again, level 6 is like the key here where things actually start to happen. And uh, it just gives me a help with like last hitting and armor as well. So I build the Wraith Band first. I think it's pretty common. Get the agility from it. So I, I try to keep my health as close to max as possible. I do have a bottle 
but you're not going to see me use it yet because I can just use Tango's. However, when you have a bottle, I think you should look at like using your mana wisely and trying to get the most out of the bottle. Here I'm not doing it because I want to safely last hit from a distance. So here I find myself last hitting under tower again. I still get the last hit on both of them, so that's all right. If you notice, I'm level four and the lich, or I'm level five and the lich is level four. I'm almost level six as well, um, which means I have a huge advantage, and that just comes from denying. Now that we're both level five, I'm, I kind of keep an eye on how much XP he has. Just like keep a, a mental note on his experience. So I have Ring of Basilisk, I have an Elder Titan that's mid, but because I pushed the wave up, he's not really able to do a whole lot standing from where his current positioning was. Now having that ward at the bottom rune and having the ward at the top rune that I have really makes it so that I can't get ganked easily and that I can just really play aggressive. Here again, you see me eat the tango instead of using the bottle. Now I switch the raindrop because of the magic damage. And I'm going to play really aggressive here. Notice like my camera positioning. I want to make sure. So I, I do want to like emphasize there that the way I used my remnants was really uh, <clears throat> inefficient. I could have gotten the kill a lot easier and I like a lot smoother, but it worked out. It's a mechanics issue. I think I was just trying to like kill him too fast. So now that I'm level seven, right? And if you notice, I'm like, I'm staying in the middle lane. I'm not ganking other lanes right now. It's six minutes and I know that a word spawned and I know it's not top, so it must be bottom. But I'm going to continue to stay mid. I have 36 last hits at 6 minutes. Which isn't bad. At all. And plus the 1 kill really helps as well. I only have 6 denies though. I do wish I had more denies. But um, well, I think last hits are always my priority when I'm playing mid. So I, I continue to check the map every few seconds to make sure they're not going to gank, but they haven't ganked in six minutes, and I have remnants, so if I need to escape, I can. But look at my positioning versus Lich, how I'm on high ground, and he can't really last hit. Like, he's kind of just walking around in circles, and there's literally nothing he can do. I actually could have killed him right now, that I think about it, looking back on it, because I'm level 8, and he's level 6, right? And I have three remnants. So. Um, I think I might actually get the kill here. I don't remember, like, what I was thinking at the time. Yeah, I think if the slide of fist would have hit. And I could have used searing chains and maybe. I would have gotten a kill. But you just have to be careful when it comes to diving towers. Because you have to always expect that there might be like a TP coming out from the other team and they might TP in to the base as well. So that's something to keep in mind uh, every time you're diving towers. So look at my positioning here. I use a remnant, but I actually get stunned. I kill the Lena and then I'm going after Dragon Knight here. So, just because of that, I got a double kill, and I'm three kills, I have 46 last hits at 8 minutes. So, Lich is getting free farm mid right now, but we have a Visage on my team, and I just built Perseverance, so it's going to give me a lot more like lane sustain, which means I should be more comfortable staying in lane mid.
and like I shouldn't uh, have any problems. If you notice though, I haven't bought boots yet, and simply because like I don't really need any movement speed. Like why would I need movement speed when I'm doing fine without it? And uh, buying better stat items just helps better. Like if I need to initiate, I can just use remnant, right? So. Now I buy boots because it's nine minutes I didn't have it. And I plan on rotating more. At least I'm 99% I'm sure that was my thought process. Now here I do something really weird. I'm kind of just standing here just to eat a tango so I can make space and have some kind of region. So now I, I, I really encourage Lich to try and attack me. Because I'm just going to regen health with Perseverance and the tango. And this should be a kill here too. I don't know what I'm doing. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Again, I didn't have any vision like behind the tower. And if people are missing on the map, it's really gonna kill. gonna be concerning to me. So here I go on high ground to get vision, right? So I pull the creep wave uh, towards the enemy tower. So I ping here because I wanted to kill uh, Dragon Knight, and this is fine because uh, I'm not going to attack him because I don't want to wake him up, but he also does this, Searing Chains come off cooldown, and I get the kill. So now I can uh, play aggressive. I don't think I go on the Lina actually because again I don't have any vision and Diving Tower is at 10 minutes. It isn't really great. Like, I'm uh, really powerful, but I don't think I'm, like, that powerful right now. I go back mid. Uh, it's free farm and solo XP. I'm level 10 and he's level 8. He just hit 9. So I get the 25 damage uh, talent. And that's just because I'm going physical. Like, as you can see, I'm building Battle Fury, right? And I don't... They have a Dragon Knight and they have a Tide Hunter. So technically, they have a lot of, like, physical damage block. And I could have gone Magical Ember here. I could have gone Radiance, maybe. Uh, but... I knew that going into this draft. I think I last picked Ember into this lineup. Which isn't great. But I was confident in my Ember that I could... Um, like outperform the other team. And as of right now, like that's what's happening. So look right here how I ping. I know Dragonite's farming. I don't want to reveal myself. But I also noticed if you look at his level, he's level six and I'm level eleven. So I can just do this. Searing chains. I know he's gonna wanna use the um shrine. But I wasn't gonna let him get away. I bring bottle back to my inventory, pick up the bounty rune, Dyer's top tower is under attack. use the bottle, and then pick up my own bounty rune after I use all the charges. Now here I almost have Dyer's enough to finish my battle of fury. I put the quilling blade back in my inventory because it's some full health and almost full mana, so I didn't really need the bottle. And I'm under tower, so... Nobody's really going to kill me right now anyways. Just because of like how their playstyle has been. Like no one's really came mid to contest. Or rotate. Did you want that? So I'm going to continue to get these last hits. I'm level 12. He's level 10. I still have like the XP and gold advantage probably. Uh, I mean I'm 5 kills. Right here is where I, I see my opportunity. To like play aggressive. <laughs> And now I'm 6 kills in zero deaths at 13 minutes with 72 last hits. Like, that's actually really good. So I'm going to continue to push this tower. I have Ring of Aquila, so I know the creeps are going to be tankier and that I should be fine.
So here, um, I could go and get Battle Fury, or I could stay mid. But it's really important for me to stay mid. Like the bonus gold and the bonus XP from being in a solo lane is really good. I could have probably dove and killed Lena maybe, but Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Battle fear is really important. And again, my main concern is like people TPing in the behind tower. So I pick up the bounty run, consume the charges. Pick up the enemy bounty room, and I'm gonna push top because we have Visage here. And I actually remember this play. I remember exactly what happened. So I know Visage has the birds, and he's gonna push with his ultimate. We can deal a lot of tower damage. I have Ring of Equipa. The tower is dropping fast, as you can see. But they're gonna fortify and have Luna TP in. I know Luna probably has her ultimate. I can use um, Flame Guard and. With Battle Fury, I can clear the creep wave easy. I have three remnants, so I can deal a lot of damage, which is exactly what I'm going to do here. Actually, no, I didn't even use remnant. I didn't need to. So, I took top tower now. I have a lot of gold. And this game, I start buying the items for my day bliss. I'm not too concerned with getting boots of travel right now. I think my mobility is fine and that I should focus on continuing to like deal more damage. Uh, at this point, mm, kind of unstoppable, but I'm here mid and I want my team to initiate, but again, there's that tower. So I have these remnants here and watch what I do carefully. So I wait, I get steering chains on both of them. I knew he wanted to stun me. So I got back. We take the tower. And I don't have Slide of Fist. And I don't actually have a lot of mana either. So I use bottle charges, pick up the arcane rune. And there's a bounty rune bottom too. I know I can play a lot more aggressive with the arcane rune. Because I was having low on mana. And the arcane rune allows me to use my abilities for less mana. So I know that Ravage is off cooldown. Or, or it's on cooldown. And, um. I mean, Luna's here. Luna can't do anything. She got caught out of position. And here's the crazy thing so if I had Boots of Travel, I obviously could have got the kill. We had a Dazzle who could take care of that. And then, once I had vision, I just used Slide of Fist. And we ended up killing Luna. Um, I mean, at this point in the game, they have a lot of lockdown, actually. Which is something I knew. When you play Ember Spirit, you have to remember, like... How much lockdown does the other team have? I mean, they have a Lina stun, a Dragonite stun, a Luna stun, Tidehunter Ravage. So, like, getting these kills early on is important because I need to make sure that the other team doesn't actually, like, get any farm or XP. Like, that's how I win this game. Um... I'm also aware of like what's going on right now. So I know there's a siege creep hitting my top tower and it's dealing a lot of damage, but I use flame guard and it's going to push this wave. I want to force the enemy team to TP. My whole team is bottom and I'm here getting this bounty run. And then I'm going to continue to probably push top because, um, I mean, to be honest, like, they, again, they can't really kill me, so... The fact that I'm getting bounty runes, and I'm pushing lanes with Aquila, Crystallis... I still have that Fairy Fire, um, it's kind of a meme, but it's still there, and it helps a little bit. It's a little bit of, like, instant region. And I know that the other team 
There's only three people alive right now. And now they only have Tidehunter and Lich alive. And I think someone else dies in this fight too. I could be wrong. But look at my positioning. I know they fortify. I used Slide of Fist there. Like right before they fortified. Or right after. <clears throat> Alright, so this is interesting. Um, I don't finish the Daedalus, actually. And here's why. So I have a little bit of, like, RNG with the Crystallis. And I can deal so much damage. Like, right here. I maybe could have gotten the kill if I stayed. But I was waiting for my team to follow up. But the timing just wasn't right. And that's alright. So because I'm melee, I'm going to play back a little bit, wait for the Elder Titan ultimate to come up, to be used, and then I'm going to um, chase the Luna, I think, that I saw bottom. I don't find the Luna, but it's not worth my time. So I'm just going to continue to push mid, right? So here we have a Dream Coil. I can use String Chains. I get a kill. And then I'm stunned. Now here is something very important. Um, I thought Lich was going to use his ultimate. But instead I just get back. My teammate has Urn. So I can actually stay in the fight longer. Here I'm kind of confused. Because they're all grouped together. And I should have killed the Tidehunter. But because of... Kraken shell, I couldn't get away. The Lich ultimate is going to bounce on the familiars. So I just used Remnant to get out. I mean, it took mana to use that. And I don't have any other Remnants now. But I have 7.6 health regen, and that's not bad. I have Boots of Travel, so theoretically, I could just... Uh, Use a remnant and get back to base and come back. And I think that's what I do. Um, you have to keep an eye out for these things. And I put the remnant purposely by the ancient stack. So that when I use my remnant back, I can uh, kill the creeps, right? So it's going to do, it's going to deal damage. I dropped the TP scroll because it's kind of useless. Now, a mistake that I made is I should have uh, bought the recipe at the base. Like now, that was a a very, it wasn't like a bad mistake, but it's just something that I shouldn't have done. I should have bought the recipe when I went back to base before the remnant. Again, I, it could have been like in the moment, I was probably thinking about other things other than buying a recipe. With Ember, you're going to farm really well, and their team really does counter me, but this is a good game, I think, to show that you can play through it. You know that I have a double damage rune right now, and I know a Dragon Knight bought back, so that's going to be on cooldown, and there's a fight happening bottom, but with my double damage rune, and now I have Daedalus, I want to get a kill here. So look at how I play. Um, I want to kill the Luna. Their carry is really important. So you just slide a fist to get the kill. I run towards Lena. And I actually have to get back here, right? Because there's four of them there. So I'm forced to regen. And I wanted to go back into this fight. That's what I told my team. And I see that Dragonite's here. So I just wrap around. Waiting to meet him at the trees. And when he does that, I wait to use Searing Chains, because I didn't want to Searing Chains the Ancients. So now that that's taken care of, um, I think I can just push bottom. Because, like, there's two dead, and they can't really fight. I 
<clears throat> Look at my positioning. I go back and I hide behind the trees. I'm gonna continue to probably push this wave. Or do I not? No. I think we I think we kinda went back. You can see that I was undecisive. And you have to look at the respawn timers. They were gonna respawn very soon too. I know at like some point in this game, I was probably telling my team that we should kill Roshan and push with Aegis. And I think we do, just not right now. Instead I go and TP top when there's like four range creeps. I want the XP. And now I hit level 20. That's a large like XP uh, gain. I see Dragonite here. Never refuse gold. So the, the Lina is telling us to push and end the game, but like the Lina is still trying, which I don't understand. So there's a little bit of like trash talk going on here, I guess you can say. Right. So basically I just wanted them to like let us in. So it's kind of a joke that I kill Dragonite and like three hits there. And look at how I like position myself. I tried to use um, Flame Guard Serene Chains, but I used it too soon and uh, I wasn't in range. So that's something else I just gotta practice. Right here though, I get caught and stunned. But I use Slide of Fist, I get a kill. I get another kill. <laughs> I have to be careful of my health. I mean, I have 12 health regen, but they're gonna re be respawning very quickly as well. So the reason I'm farming the jungle is because I haven't finished my Lincoln Sphere. I think that's important. Uh, I mean, you have, again, all these stuns that I mentioned earlier in this video. You have a Dragonite, you have a Lina, a Lina Ultimate too. Uh, you have a Luna. So there's a, a lot that's going on. I just casually farm the Ancients. Um, I guess in this video, um, like, people have a common mis misconception that, like, the game's over right now, and it's really not. They could have came back. I mean, it's 34 to 10. Uh, we haven't lost a single tower, but... To be honest, like, that doesn't really mean anything. It's hard for them to come back, yeah, but it's definitely possible. Look at how I initiate. I get a kill. I pick up two kills. And then our creeps are kinda pushing, so that's good. Whenever I try to get these team fights, I want to make sure that the lane is pushed out. So I'm 18 kills and zero deaths right now at 27 minutes. That is really good actually. So my next item I have queued is a divine. And I mean at this point, like divines aren't usually an item that I would recommend buying in like any game. There are a few good heroes that can buy divines, like Kunkka maybe, Ember Spirit. Um, it's still kind of risky. I was confident in this game, so I didn't really let that. Right here is a really good play, actually. I have Lincoln Sphere, so I know that with Flame Guard and Lincoln Sphere, there's not really a way that I die. So I help get the kill top on Dragonite. 
There's three of them dead. And we can easily push. So look at where the other team is. I used Searing Chains, but he was already Yule Scepter. That's another mistake that I made. And look at my Sleight of Fist. I'm letting my team do a lot of like the tower damage, but I'm pretty sure I, div I buy Divine this game, to be honest. So my Elder Titan builds Pipe of Insight, which is already communicated to me at the beginning of the game, but that makes perfect sense considering they all have a very high magical uh, lineup. So that includes the Lena, the Luna, the Lich. They all have like a really high magic, so having some kind of protection really helps. I mean, especially with Flame Guard. But I mean, just look at how well I'm farming. They actually take our bottom tower. I go bottom. I cancel my TP because there's a tide hunter there. And not that I couldn't have killed him, but I didn't know where the rest of the team was. And right here, I think I was just looking for the tide hunter. But Tide Hunter TP top, so I just continue to farm. And I think we go uh, Roche right now. So they're already in Roche. And I'm gonna farm the Ancients. I didn't think he would need my help because I thought my Elder Titan was gonna help, but I, uh, I go into Roshan. I don't really have any room for Aegis, so I'm gonna have to make room for that. So I start doing that, like, during the Roshan fight. Or you should at least, because you want to make sure that you can actually pick up the item. So I drop the Stout Shield. So I get Aegis. Which is fine, I mean, this allows me to play, like, more aggressively, so... I'm still not level 25 yet. Uh, the other team is really toxic, and they're... Not being good sportsmanship, but that's okay. Um, so, right now, it's really just a matter of when we push. So the lane is going to push itself, and I know that, and I know that they can't really defend. I mean, like, look, look at their positioning right now. They're right next to each other. Or they'll get a double kill, and I get level 25 out of that. So that's, like, two sleight of fist charges. So here... Literally three hits, and I kill Lich. I have Flame Guard, so I'm not taking any damage, but you want to spread out. It's really good against, like, Visage's Familiars, so... Uh, so I finished Divine now. 
at 33 minutes with 22 kills and zero deaths. And I was gonna get maker creeps, but I think the game ends before I actually take the racks. Look at how much damage I'm doing to the tower and one hit, it gets 140. So we finally call a good game and that's the end. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in my next video. Peace. Let the fighting rig It's an easy to show with the weight of the world on my shoulder. It's not a game that I am playing